Get it, get it. <laughs> All right, man. Welcome in. Let us, uh, let's just go ahead and jump on into it. I hope you guys are doing great. Got a lot of ground to cover. You know how it is, man. I got a lot of ground to cover. I want to be in a hurry. Get my sip. Get revved up. <laughs> Bob in heaven. Thank you so much for blessing us with this opportunity to share in your word with folks in this yes. fellowship. Uh, we hope that we say what is right in your sight, yes. wise in your eyes. Uh, fortified by you to report the truth and we hope that we report in a way that is pleasing to you report what is correct sound and uh, groovy yes Lord and y'all thank you guys so much for uh, you know fellowshipping with us uh, it is a blessing to get to share in his word with you yes. his fortification his love his love his joy his shalom to you let us be that effective salt and light and fruitful for his glory Walk and talk in his way. Do what's right in his sight and wise in his eyes. And, um, you know, just do what we can to be conformed to him, you know, to just be yielded. Right. What we can do is yield ourselves to mm. be conformed to him and, you know, be uh, those that he you know, wants to know that we may serve him and party with him forever. Can you dig it? I can dig it. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. The amen. Amen. All right, y'all. We's at Leviticus 20 in our chapter by chapter, verse by verse read. We'll have us picking up on verse 10 and we're going to read to 14. Where you at, 10? There you are. OK, the man who commits adultery with another man's wife, who commits adultery with a friend's wife, uh, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall Surely be put to death. Uh, if a man lies with his father's wife, freaky, and <laughs> has uncovered his father's nakedness, both of them shall surely be put to death, and their blood shall be on them. Right? Bloody death. Right? God ain't messing around. Uh, if a man lies with his daughter in law, Okay, with the daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be put to death. They have committed a perversion and their blood shall be on them. If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination and they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be on them. If a man takes a wife and her mother, it is wickedness. They shall surely be burned with fire, both he and they, so that they may be, there may be no wickedness among you. All right, y'all. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, you know, Uncle Zoe is going to be class clown, and I emphasize put to death. It's some serious stuff. Okay. Yeah, it is. Um, pretty self-explanatory, I reckon, right? You read it. Commit this adultery. Put to death. Y'all, and notice... You might notice um, that the charge is um, more focused on the man at this point. Because mm -hmm. okay? uh, we tend to be the ones typically testing God on this. <laughs> All right. Yeah, women do it, too. But that's no excuse from our responsibility. Amen. All right. And we lose sight of our responsibility when we take our sight off the Lord. All right. Your father's wife biological mother or stepmother no further explanation needed death mm. all right but it should be noted that in this case it was consensual by both parties making both pervert parties guilty yeah all right doing this is uncovering the father's nakedness meaning this act uh brings deep shame against your father right and it's a given 
that fathers and sons, I, should, I maybe should have started off with a disclaimer, <laughs> is that well, uh, yeah. uh, if, uh, um, uh, you probably may have figured it out right now, say, you know what, let me go ahead and watch yeah. this first uh, uh, before I, um, uh, we share this with the children, and I may have to, you know, uh, maybe paraphrase some things or give like a, what do they call that, um, uh, not annotated, is that what it is? It, annotated version? <laughs> All right, but you know, Zoe's gonna try to keep it clean and PG or thirteen, and uh, yes. not you know try to put it in a way that your kids will have like uh, nightmares about and have to have uh, therapy about. <laughs> um, at any rate, I mean, this is this is stuff that we need to understand, though. Okay, so doing this undercovers, like I said, and uncover, uncovers uh, the father's nakedness. So, like I said, this is gonna bring a deep shame, right? And fathers and sons. Uh, Humping on each other is, is oh. also punishable by death as well, right? Now, if a father-in-law has sex with his daughter-in-law, death to them as the consenting pervert party, right? If two dudes go mud skipping with each other, uh, that is punishable. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. This is punishable by death. Okay, so as we can see, y'all, uh, homosexuality, incest, uh, adultery, uh, these are things that God really detests. Yeah. Okay, but wait, wasn't incest the primary agent in populating the earth? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, and it's part of our death sentence. Mm. Okay. The earth wasn't supposed to be populated like that. Yes. When Adam and Eve transgressed, they stepped out of God's order, including how the earth would be populated. Mm. Right. Now that death had dominion, one of the sins that would be paid in death dollars was incest. Right. Yeah. That would be, you know, incest would be one of those things. Adam and Eve, y'all, had a choice, but when they gave death dominion, they eliminated the choice of how the earth would be populated, right? It wasn't right. even like really a choice. This, is a, this, was, this was how it's going to be, but now you don't even have that choice. That's just how it was going to be, but you don't even have that choice anymore, all right? The only way you can populate the earth now is by the means that comes with the death sentence. All right, because you guys chose death anyway. So that wasn't supposed to happen. So God's not this hypocritical pervert that made it to where the world had to be populated by incest and then punish us for it. All right, Satan, Adam, and Eve did that. Yeah. Not God. All right. So though this was a defiling means of population, it was the means they set us up for. All right. And then God had it codified that incest is no longer tolerable. Ample time has gone by for people to see that it ain't necessary. All right. But out of perversion, people kept doing it. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah. And part of why God allowed it to go on for as long as it did because this was just, uh, unfortunately, this is the arrangement that Adam gave us now, yeah. right? So God's like, okay, in order for you, you to be redeemed, there's these things that I'm gonna have to let go in order to, in, in order to fix this. Thanks a lot, Adam, <laughs> all right? So he, he went on allowed, uh, he, he, they allowed, he allowed for it to go on for as long as it did to show that how, how, how much man can be given over to such wickedness yeah. and needs to be saved from his inclinations. Okay? And also God used these things to establish nations and bloodline. Okay? This detectable act, y'all, that is punishable by death is a sin that contributed to the bloodline of Jesus himself. All right? And it's a sin that he paid for on our behalf. Okay? So to those who say that the Bible condones incest, no, it doesn't. Mm. No, it doesn't. Okay? Now, if you claim to be a Christian, 
It is because you are supposed to understand that Yeshua is God, right? He is the word that was with God and is God. Yeshua has always been, right? And the word, which is Yeshua himself, says, let me repeat that, the word, which is Yeshua himself, says that homosexuality is punishable by death, as well as all those other things that we just mentioned, right? He was always there. He's not just the God of the New Testament. He's the same God of the Old, right? Because as Christians, we realize Jesus is God, right? He's always been here. Okay? He makes his position on this sanction very clear. Yet we got a lot of so-called Christians out there assuming that Jesus accepts it, thus taking his name in vain and shaping him in an image that suits them, right? Jesus forgives homosexuals and sinners, period, all right, right. upon their repentance yeah. of it, all right? There's conditions on receiving his forgiveness to all those who keep trying to say the Lord loves, you know, and uh, unconditionally and all that sort of that's false, accepts us unconditionally, false. Okay. If you are a homosexual, a sinner, period, confess that Yeshua is who he says he is. Okay. Recognize you are sinning against him and petition him to conform you to him. All right. Thus, repent and stop repeating your sins. Yeah. All right. That's the transaction of forgiveness, y'all. All right. You can't just isolate scripture and take for granted that Jesus saves everyone who calls on him. Mm -mm. There's calling on Jesus. And there's paying lip service. All right. Yeshua knows the difference. <laughs> he knows the difference. He knows the difference between people who want to be saved from their sins and those who want to be affirmed mm. in their sins. Right. All right. Jesus is going to say, I don't know you or where you come from. Do not drag my name into your sins, claiming that your indulgences are approved by me because of this accepting idol you've assumed to carve me out to be. Yeah. All right. When you call on the name of Jesus, it ain't a one time thing. All right. Oh, I called on the name of Jesus. I'm saved for all time now. Uh, no, no. Calling on the name of Jesus ain't a one time thing. Y'all, it's a daily call. Amen. All right. Yes, you renew is. your faith every day. Yes. Hey, you can call on Jesus and be saved. Yeah. And then the next day, assume that you don't need to call him. Right. You didn't you done, done your one call. Right. And then the next day you just go on sinning, thinking, oh, well, I called on him and I'm saved and I can't lose my salvation. Wrong. Right. One. Y'all, when, when Yeshua died on the cross. Everybody was saved. Mm. Right. That saved everybody. Yeah. Uh, well, they lose that salvation when they don't accept his salvation. You see what I'm saying? Thank you. Yes. Every, you know, everybody had it. Not everybody, keep, you know, not everybody keeps it. Not everybody wants it. Not everybody wants it. Okay? So, now, why would Jesus tell us to stop sinning? Okay, I forgive you of your sins and, and heal you and save you, uh, but, but don't go sinning anymore or else you'll still be saved by me, you little dicks. <laughs> you know, no. Doesn't work that way. And Jesus even says in John 5, see, you have been made well. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Jesus, this isn't just, you know, go forth and sin no more. And this one, Jesus doubles down. Stop uh -huh. sinning. Well, something bad will happen to you. Uh -huh. All right. Now, for example, you have unrepentant homosexuals more and more infiltrating the church. They flaunt in their sin, y'all, and claim they are saved. You even got homosexual pastors, you know, so-called pastors, right? Yeah. Uh, they, they assume that they're saved because they've called on the name of Jesus. 
And John 3.16 says what it means. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right? You call on his name for salvation. Right? You are saved. And then you go and betray that call by taking his name in vain. Then you're screwed. Right? Because you have called on the name that saves you. And then you create a graven image that suits you. That you call Jesus. Right. So you're basically like the Israelites that received salvation from God. Right. The Exodus. And then created a golden calf and called that God. Mm. Right. Yeah. They lost their salvation, didn't they? Right. In fact, they got slaughtered. So, again, y'all, don't call on God, get saved by God, and then create, create an idol and call it God that you assume accepts your sins. Hmm. Mm. Okay? Jesus will say, I don't care if you called my name. I don't know you, and you most certainly don't know me. Mm. Yeah, but y'all, y'all can see why the Lord has drawn such a hard line against homosexuality. Yeah. Look at the perversion that's spreading in our culture under the rainbow banner, right? Babies are being sacrificed under that rainbow banner. Mm. The lifestyle that violates God's re reproductive law of nature is hostile towards the life that is repro that's, that's reproduced according to God's authorship of nature. Yeshua has always been the one who says homosexuality is punishable by death. And I understand why. And I don't disagree with him. Okay? He also says he doesn't delight in the destruction of the wicked, but that he prefers that they see the light and live. Mm -hmm. And I say this because as Christians, we aren't rubbing our hands together. Saying, oh, goody, God wants to go out and execute homosexuals. Mm. No. Yeah, it's not where we're at. Our job is to just tell them the truth so that they can see the light and live. And here's the problem, though, or another one. It's becoming more and more illegal to tell them the truth. Yeah, that's a mm. fact. Yeah, so we're, we're not supposed to be letting that happen. You know, but this is all, you know, this a lot of this comes out of God's above our politics and people stay out of political, political discourse. And then they and the godless go around and make this stuff legal for us to have to be ruled by. Yeah, because we weren't there. You know, we decided to stay out of it. This is how the oppression and the evil takes over. Mm. Yep. All right. So they're being barricaded from the truth mm. and empowered in their perversion, y'all. Yes. Right? And the more they're emboldened to run with this behavior, the more you see things like people allowing their kids to be poisoned by chemicals to assume to change their sex or mutilated to murder off what the kid was born as, thinking that they could transform into something else. Mm. All right. Y'all, this is an act of war and it makes these perverts war criminals. And this is why the Lord's word, that being Yeshua, has always said this is punishable by death. Yeah. Do you see, you see what's happening? Right? They're destroying. They're destroying kids. They're destroying themselves. All right? And trying to drag other people into it. The destruction that they're causing. That's why the Lord draws such a hard line on it. All right? You think he just did it just because he just feels like being mean to gay people? <laughs> The evil that they're doing is why he draws such a hard line against it. Yeah. Okay? Y'all, and again, I have, let's, let's, don't get it twisted, right? Before anybody tries to, you know, make me out to be like some uh, cult leader saying, we need to round him up and, and, and just, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay? I'm not saying that these people need to be rounded up and we go upside their head with rocks until the blood runs. That's not what I'm saying. They don't need to be stoned until they bleed. They need the stone that bled for them. Amen. That's, That's what they need. All right. We're supposed to put the homosexuality 
to death with the word of the chief stone. Right. That's the stoning that we're supposed to do. Mm. Right. If they reject the stone, if they reject the truth of the chief stone, then he will be the executioner. And his execution is that they will not inherit the kingdom. Okay, our job is to report the truth. That is the only stone we're supposed to go upside their head with. Amen. All right. But when they get belligerent, y'all, to a point of physical assault that deprives someone of their life, then yes, the response to that is due process and a judgment of death. And y'all, this this also includes a person who knows they have a killer virus and withholds that information while sexually transmitting the disease. Yeah. Okay? There's no cure for it. I don't care how good the treatments have gotten. The, without the treatment, that virus is, is a death sentence. Right. All right. But y'all, these things are the reasons why God has made homosexuality punishable by death because it is especially effective for the spread of disease. Yes. One, just because of, 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 uh, of the exposure uh, and because of the promiscuity of it, the frequency. You know, of, of, of how of the instances that arise on the, of the occasion where you could share it. Yeah. OK, so God's like, if you value satisfying your perversion more than you value life, then you need to be put to death. Right? But to these people, y'all satisfying their perverted indulgences is living. Right. Hey, man, you're mm-hmm. just not living if, uh, you know, if you ain't doing this. So. But y'all. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look how these people, y'all, <coughs> are emboldened in their indulgence. I need a sip from the Zopium Dead mug. <laughs> <coughs> Makes everything better. <laughs> ah, see how effective that is? <laughs> see, you get one of those, and you ain't never have to worry about anybody doing a Heimlich maneuver on. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> But y'all look at how these people are emboldened in their indulgences. You can give somebody HIV. Yeah. Right. And it ain't a crime. Right. If you don't disclose it. It's no it's no crime. A lot of home in y'all. A lot of homosexuals give each other HIV on purpose. Bug parties. Right. They're sexually excited about the death sins they give to each other. And you think God's the psycho? Hmm. <clears throat> Y'all, we messed up by allowing the godless to make their simple ideas laws that we have to acknowledge yes, and live do. by. Right? Our job was to at least not allow this sin to become something we have to endorse. Yeah. Right? Now, by law, we have to acknowledge it and accept it so also it should be noted that the word is is written as if a man lies with a man as with a woman they have both committed an abomination they must surely be put to death their blood is upon them the word could have just said lies with another man, right? A man lies with another man or has sexual relationships with another man, right? You would think that we would get the picture, right? Mm-hmm. But God knows loopholes, you know? <laughs> he knows loopholes that we would try. Yeah. And, and says, if a man lies with a man, as with a woman, he makes sure to cap it off with that. Yeah. Because God knows there's going to be men who will try to assume to be women or identify as women. This has been going on for a long time. Wow. Right? And if a man is having sex with another man who identifies as a woman, then it's not really a sin, right? (laughs) And God's like, yeah, that that ain't going to work. Right? Don't even try it. I know you're going to try it. (laughs) So, effeminate males, y'all, Men identifying as women or men submitting themselves to other men 
for sex do not inherit the kingdom. Now, before the homosexuals feel like they're singled out, right? It doesn't mean that the whole, that, that heterosexuals get to do what they want, you know, whatever right. they want either. All right? No, we don't. So, like a dude can't be having a threesome with a woman and her mother. Ew. Right? The Lord wants such people set on fire. That's, yeah. <laughs> people do that stuff, though. Right? So, God's like, look, man, I don't care how hot your wife's mom is, <laughs> you're going to pay a hot price. Oh, boy. <laughs> Hey, you don't sleep with your wife's mom and you most certainly don't sleep with them together. Hey, thinking it's okay because it's like family entertainment or something. That's not how you do family. <laughs> That's not how you do family. Yeah. Entertainment. Awkward. All right. Yeah. So let's read 15. Where are you at 15? I know you know somewhere. Glow or, <laughs> glow or something so I can see you. Okay. Uh, light up like the unum and the thum, thum, thumim, thumim. All right. If a man lies with an animal, oh, Lord. Oh, no. <laughs> if, a man, uh, no. if a man lies with an animal, he shall surely be put to death. And you are to kill the animal, kill the wab. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay. But this bunny is so soft that I just couldn't help myself. Kill the wab. <laughs> Elmer Fudge, you stop that. You put the, you leave Bugs Bunny alone. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, no. If a woman. So it was taken from 16. What am I reading? See, yeah, you're 15, goofing 16. around. I'm oh, sorry. I don't know. <laughs> if a woman approaches any animal and lies down with it, you are to kill the woman and the animal. It made wab it stew. All right. Uh, then. Uh, they shall, yeah, they shall surely be put to death and their blood shall be on them. Okay. All right. So having sex with animals, death, death, All right? Bestiality has been around for a long time, y'all. Yeah. Now, if a man or a woman engages in it, death, darn right, death, Hey, okay. But, okay, both, both. The person and the animal, mm -hmm. right? Y'all, I don't. It's, you know, I, I, don't get me wrong, y'all. I don't delight in the prospect of somebody being put to death. It's not that. It's, some of the things that people do is comical. <laughs> All right, it's like, dude, seriously, man, dude, get away from the cow, dude. It's like, you know, it's it's, it's, it's like, or, or at least wait till I pull out my camera for you two, because we're going to make fun of you. Uh, and, then, and then we're going to stone you. But we're going to have a laugh first. But it's just like that, those kind of antics. Like, seriously, are you giving over to that? I mean, it's it's sad and comical at the same time. But, you know, somebody doing something that's, you know, asking for a death sentence. Like, man, that's, that's not the part that's funny. But, you know, the other part is just like, yeah. Knowing that, you know, people can be given over to this, man, it's like you got to laugh so you don't cry. It's like, dude, yeah, God, are we, are we that, you know, you know, man. Debauched. You need Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, but the thing is, y'all, the word does say both the person and the animal, right? Why the animal, though? You know, why the animal? Yeah. It's, it's just the animal. <sighs> You know, it had no knowledge of the evil that it was doing on its part, right? Oh, no, I beg to differ. Hey, okay? What? Because as far as the animal lover, <laughs> the animal lovers are concerned, animals are equal members of the family. Oh, yeah. Hey, okay? <laughs> they are just as emotional and even intelligent and deserve the same equal rights as human beings they're not even supposed to be seen as pets <laughs> right so if they have these human qualities then the animal can be seen as just as uh as just as consciously consenting as the human engaging in sex with it yikes uh, see see the, the the person uh giving that animal they did that to the animal they bestowed that i mean man was supposed to be given dominion right yeah. You gave that distinction to them. Your narrative put that animal on equal punishment plane as human. 
All right. So according to such so much confidence, you put in the animals confidence. You set them up to be culpable. All right. So the person having sex with that and, and this y'all this and that's not a a, um, a perspective from modernity. All right. Yeah. This has always been. This has always been. Yeah. Or is it, do you think like these people like in the ancients and stuff like that aren't have aren't aren't on that kind of of, of um, uh, frequency of thinking? We're not they're not thinking about the competency of an animal. No, no, no. Right. So y'all, the, the person having sex with an animal has reduced humankind to just another organism that's on the same level as another animal, right? And can get just as much gratification from an animal than with a person. You see what I'm saying? So don't blame God for being mean for saying that the animal is to be put to death. Like you animal activists, right, are the ones making animals out to be equal enough to humans to be aware of what it's engaging in. All right. And that's part of why God would have all these animals killed in scorched earth campaigns. We need to send the Israelites to war against other nations because on top of unclean breeding practices, these things promote disease and, and, uh, and, and uh, not as nutritious, you know, meat. Mm -hmm. Right. But because they were also having sex with their animals. So God was like, kill them all. Right. Again, y'all don't try to make animals, you know, uh, you know, don't try, don't try to make it out like, you know, these animals are these unassuming creatures. Because animals are revered as gods. Yeah. Like I said, like, you know, this, it, it, don't think in terms of like a, a, a modern uh, uh, mindset about how we view animals with these certain qualities and things like that and how intelligent, they, how intelligent that we may think they may be and what they're capable of and stuff like that. That's always been because you had these people, the prim, you know, the, the ancients saw them as gods. Yeah. Okay. They associated them with gods. All right. So even in our sophisticated culture, uh, you can kill babies. Mm -hmm. You can kill babies, but animals are revered and protected as if they are gods. Some states mm -hmm. are bestowing rights and personhood onto animals in the courts right now. Come on now. I'm trying to make animals out to be Scooby-Doo. They can talk and <laughs> honest, you know. <laughs> All right. You see what I'm saying? The, it's mistakes. a real thing. Yeah. Real thing. And, and, and you, you don't think that it's strange that people would sacrifice their kids. The, the level of, that they would put these animals on. Yeah. So when a person figures that they'll have sex with an animal and, and you think that God is cruel because he says, yeah, kill the animal too. It's like, God, that's not, that's not so much, a, that's not the cruelty of God. That's the cruelty of that person. Yeah. Okay. The, the perversion that they're given over to. Okay. So. These so-called progressives are the same mindset of the ancients who saw their gods with animal features, mm. right? And God's like, if you want to put the animal on that level, then you have to accept that the animal is conscious of what it's participating in. You gave them that, all right? So obviously, this is not something that God takes lightly, right? It should be obvious, but despite the obvious, there are people who have sex with animals, right? So these are things, you know, that, that you know, it's like they seem that they'd be a given, but unfortunately, people have to be told things. Like, you know, getting your furry freak on is a no-no. <laughs> naughty, naughty, shame, shame. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's go into Leviticus 17. Uh, okay. Ah, all right. So, um, yeah, this, you know, this is the, like the next disturbing road of our, yeah. of our journey dealing with. Uh, let me just read it. <laughs> okay. um, let's see. If a man takes his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and sees her nakedness, and she his, it is a shameful thing. They are to be cut off in the sight of the children of their people, for he has uncovered his sister's nakedness and will bear his iniquity. Okay. 
So check this out. Um, so once again, like this is full or half, so you don't get you know, half punishment if it's your half sibling. It's like, no, no punishment is punishment. Uh, they are to be put to death. When the word of God says cut off from the people, it typically means put to death. Mm. Okay. But this capital offense, y'all, is part of Yeshua's genealogy, though. Right? Right. And part of the establishment of the faith of Israel with, with Abraham. S Sarah was Abraham's half-sister. Yep. Right? Yeshua's bloodline includes this. And he died atoning for that sin too oh, and we yeah. talk about it. It's, it's, it's it, this this doesn't make these things acceptable yeah. don't be like well you know, you, you, uh, jesus was born for this no there was a sin right a sin that he had to atone for we weren't supposed to get here like this and it's not a is a whether it's for procreation or recreation you ain't supposed to do it all right so um now if the brother forces himself on his sister he is to be put to death. A brother forcing himself on his sister has happened in the house of David. Mm -hmm. Right? With Amnon forcing himself on Tamar. Amnon wasn't legally put to death. He died in an ambush orchestrated by his brother avenging his sister Tamar. All right? Or their sister. But Yeshua absorbed the legal execution that Amnon was supposed to be subject to. Right? And of course, our sins. Yeah. Right? So let's um, let's take uh, eighteen. And where are you at eighteen? Okay, if a man lies with a woman during her nita and exposes her nakedness, he has exposed her flow, and she has uncovered the flow of her blood. Both of them are to be cut off from among their people. You are not to uncover the naked. Okay, hold up. Let me see. Yeah, let's we'll, we'll stop there. Let's just talk about that for a second. Um, if a man lies with a woman during her menstrual cycle, y'all, this is punishable by death. It's cut off from the people. Like I said, that tends to mean you to be put to death. Okay, this is punishable by death. Exposing yourself to other people's bodily fluids is a very effective way to catch and spread disease, especially if it's blood. And it's once again, you know, if, if a person, um, and this is most likely t uh, uh, concerning fornication. I was gonna ask that. Okay. Most, most likely uh, concerning for fornication. And if a person is, is uh, engaged in this promiscuity, then of course you're gonna have frequency and more uh, opportunity to expose somebody else to what you've been exposed to. Yeah. Okay. These things, you know, cause disease, death and God's like you do that and if you have dis if you have disregard for other people because you just wanted you know to, to have sex yeah I'm gonna have you put to death yeah. you know <laughs> you, you're selfish okay um, so y'all long before the the modern scientific community figured out you know that all bodily fluids are suspect God has already made it clear to avoid contact with other people's blood and other discharges oozes or whichever okay and God be like, since you people are obviously so dang sex happy that I have to tell you not to have sex with your relatives and animals, <laughs> all right? I got to tell you not to be exposing yourself to a female while she's in her menstrual cycle, okay? She's not to be going around sitting on things to avoid exposing her blood to it, okay? If you compromise the people's safety, on this by inviting the spread of a mean STD, I'll have you put to death, all right? A woman was on her cycle, who was on her cycle was given a designated area where she could be and rest, right? She wasn't to be out and about touching things, you know, sitting on them, lying down, and people weren't supposed to be touching the things that she touched. But as we discover, they didn't keep these practices in the time that Jesus showed up. Hmm. Many of them were affected with diseases, right? Yeah. Not true. just from, from doing that, but from other things. All the, the hygienic uh, things he told them. It's like, don't, dude, don't do that. You're going to spread disease. You're going to have some problems. You're going to have nutrition problems. Yep. All right? All that stuff. It's like, you think that the Lord was kidding when he was talking about breeding, but you don't breed your animals right. You don't farm right. Scorched earth. Yeah. You're going to have problems. 
And these people came in and they got, they got, they uh, born blind, yeah. born deaf, born lame, you know, having disease and all that sort of stuff. This stuff comes from malnourishment and not farming and ranching right. You know, and, and look at it now. We got this GMO food and all that sort of stuff. And people are just, they're malnourished. Obese, yep. diabetic conditions, yep. inflammatory conditions. Why? Because our food is, is almost kind of poison to us yeah. as, as it is nutritious. That's true. All right? Slow poison. But we're seeing the effects of it. You know, so the Lord draws a hard line against these things. He says, man, don't do that. You, 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 you doing each other dirty like that. So, and that's, you know, but these people, these defiling things that people do, mm -hmm. you know, that cause diseases and things like that. But it, we're, we're focused in, on this one right now concerning uh, menstruation and people like, you know, exposing themselves to these things. And when and you're not supposed to go around touching things because you defile it when you do. All right. So that's why Yeshua said the son of man has no place to lay his head because of how much defilement that there was. Right. Yeshua put that law in place a long time ago, you know, to point to his arrival. Don't be having sex with a woman while she's menstruating. OK, you're going to make things unclean. Whatever she touches and whatever you touch after touching her or whatever else she has touched will be unclean. Hey, so Jesus, you know, he's be like, look, man, a lot of illnesses going on here. Y'all didn't keep my health ordinances, did you? No, you didn't. Like having sex during a menstrual cycle. Right. Right. And y'all go around touching stuff, making things unclean. I got no place to lay my head, man. Yeah. I go more in depth than this on a, a, on the, on the episode that I did. Uh, keep your junk germs, uh, you know, to yourself. <laughs> I'll put the link. <laughs> y'all can get uh, more, more, more in, in depth on that. And um, y'all, as, as we've discussed before, God is not a big fan of our blood as it is mm -hmm. because our body is dependent on blood, is dependent on our blood supplying what the devil now rules. Okay? The devil rules the air and our body delivers that to our body. So we were supposed to be dependent on what God breathed into Adam, you know? That's that's what our blood was supposed to be circulating, not what the devil rules. So God's not a big fan of our blood. And if you're finding sexual fulfillment and being exposed to blood, then God's really got issues with you. Yeah. OK. Um, and, and, you know, some people may feel like you know, and, and the feminists, you know, use things like this to, to say that, you know, well, this is a woman's natural process and, and God is just a bigot against women, oh, you yeah. know, and tries to make it out to be like, um, you know, menstruation is just this, you know, God is, it makes it out to be these, us to be these dirty creatures. I used to you say know? that. I used to hate this. Part right. Y'all, there's it's unfortunate that people don't really see what's going on here or, or when they use things like, um, you know, the Bible is anti woman. Uh, an anti uh, a woman's sexual liberation because God has um, virgins stoned on their uh, 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 or a, women, a, a woman who is not a virgin. Right. If a woman loses her virginity, she's to be stoned on her father's porch. Y'all, that's not what that means. She's not being stoned to death because of not being a virgin. She's being stoned for being a liar. Hmm. OK. OK. She lied about the virginity. And they went through all the processes to get married. People, y'all, these things, that kind of dishonor, those things bring upon clan wars. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so when you got you know, a, a, a village tramp and stuff like that, start pitting people, you know, the, that testosterone gets to flying and stuff like that. And, 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 and words that start getting said and you, and you speak dishonor against somebody's family and whatnot, or there's this betrayal or, or, or whichever, people start getting killed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the Lord's like, for this dishonor, the, the, the payment for this, for her lying, yeah. is death. Not because she wasn't a virgin, but because she lied. Okay? But y'all, the, 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 here's, here's the bigger, bigger picture. Okay? When people, when, when, when the feminists want to use the word of God, uh, you know, talking about, you know, making women out to be these dirty creatures with, with menstruation and, and against women because of... Uh, uh, a woman not being a virgin and whatnot. Y'all, this is how this works. The reason why God zeroes in on the Nita, 
or, or the, the, uh, the, the menstrual discharge and puts the, the, the sanction of you not to have sex with her during her period. You're not to have sex with her seven days after it stops. Okay. Or any other kind of discharge, let's say following pregnancy. Okay, or at least yeah. while a person is healing, you got to make sure that the bleeding has stopped. When the bleeding has stopped, you want to make extra sure that it stopped by waiting another seven days. Okay, this ties into the woman being stoned on her father's porch for lying, for lying about not being a virgin. Y'all, a woman is to prove her virginity by the mark of her hymen being broken. All right. So she loses her virginity. She is to present that. All right. It's, 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 it becomes a public presentation. I know it's like, that seems rather personal. That's seems something barbaric to us. Right. Seems very private. But why, why would the, why would the Bible write that in there? Why is that written in there? All right. That a woman is supposed to present basically this banner of her losing her virginity to her husband. All right. These things tie into this. How do you prove that Mary was a virgin? Right. How do you prove that? What? Just on faith? God take he because he it's sure he expects us to believe it, but you can pre present somebody with empirical evidence and they still don't believe it. But here's the thing. God doubles down on it. He sent an angel and he also put the protocols in place for Joseph to know that his wife was a virgin. All right. So the Nita do not have sex during your Nita. It needs to be absolutely clear that that discharge was because of the hymen being broken, not because of anything else. Make sure that there is no discharge. If she had a discharge seven days after to make sure that there is no discharge, none. So when you when the hymen is broken, you know that that's exactly what it was. Hmm. The Lord has demonstrated I restore things. After Mary gave birth, it's like, look, man, I can restore somebody's ear. I can restore somebody's arm. I can put things back. Yeah. Right. You don't think that the Lord didn't put her hymen back? Yeah, he did. Right. He put that back. So that way, when Joseph did have relations with her, he was a she was able to present the banner. That's how people knew that she was a virgin. She told the truth. All right. So. Why else would God put that statute in there? Present the hymen. I mean, I mean, present the mark of the hymen being broken back in the Old Testament so that Mary could present the hymen and say, I mean, I'll present the hymen mark. Right. The signature that she was actually a virgin. So it's not God making such a big deal about, oh, you're so unclean. It's, it's more than that. These are the things that God set in place early on so that when Mary gave birth to Christ, she can actually say, yeah, I really am a virgin. See what I'm saying? All right. So let's not be don't be mad. Don't be mad because, because God says these things. He did it for our own good. He did it for our own good. All right. So let's read uh, uh, Leviticus uh, 19. Um, let's see. Uh. Where you at, 19? Okay, there you go. No, 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 19. <laughs> remember that, Jim? Okay. You are not to uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister or your father's sister, for the one who does that has made his close relative naked and will bear, excuse me, his iniquity. All right. Let me read. I'm going to read 22. If a man lies with his aunt, he has uncovered his uncle's nakedness, they shall surely bear their sin and die childless. If a man takes his brother's wife, it is an impurity. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness and they will die childless or they will be childless. Mm -hmm. Okay, from here y'all, it further instructs about not having relations with family members like your mother or your father's siblings or aunts and, and uncles, right? But hold up. 
Moses himself, the guy commissioned by God to codify what God has given him, is the son of parents who were aunt and nephew. All right. Amram mm. married his aunt Jochebed and Moses, Aaron and their sister Miriam are their offspring. Yeah. All right. We all the world at this point, particularly, is sufficiently populated at this point where where Moses is coming in. Right. The nations are established. You know, the priesthood that would tie into the bloodline to render Yeshua is set. Moses and his siblings were born from incest. And that was the last of it that God would basically tolerate and had Moses codify, ironically, right? The one who was born from incest was commissioned to codify against incest. Wow. All right? And, I mean, and it's, it's, not, it's not a sick irony on God's part. It's like, look, this is what, you know, this is what you guys, I told you, don't do this. Yeah. They did it anyway. <laughs> and this is now, this is what we got. And God's like, okay, well, great. Um, I've got a lot of, um, I got a lot of fixing to do, mm -hmm. right? And unfortunately, I'm going to have to use these things. All right, so incest, y'all, is no longer excusable. Naughty, naughty, shame, shame. <laughs> All right. So that being said, y'all, we thank you, God, for that awkward lesson. <laughs> awkward. Uh, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> that awkward lesson. Hey. And uh, speaking of naughty, naughty, shame, shame, I hope that you're not ashamed of sharing these videos. <laughs> <laughs> and though I encourage uh, supporting the delivery of the message, y'all, because even if it's free, uh, delivering it isn't, uh, don't let anybody shame you into supporting. That's not, that's not what we do, or ashamed in sharing your, uh, your, your wealth uh, like covetous Democrats do. Um, <laughs> we, don't, we don't do that here. Uh, no, no shame in our game, y'all. <laughs> okay, so anyway, yeah, that's this kind of ties into what we'll be talking about in uh in my in my horrible pitch. Uh, <laughs> what we'll be talking Aww. about <laughs> when we pick up in Second Corinthians, uh, uh, which basically is talking about no guilt, no guilt giving, and okay, we've talked about guilt tripping and stuff like that. And Second Corinthians is going to render a lesson in uh, uh no guilt giving. Don't let anybody guilt you into giving your huh. motivation to give should only be driven by recognizing the true word when you hear it and eagerly wanting it shared right you just you just you jazz by it and you want to and yeah. you want to give according to that okay and also having the discernment to not have a general prejudice for those reminding that support is needed to promote the truth oh they're just trying to make money you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know? So we'll be covering issues like that, you know, in the next leg of our journey with our chapter by chapter, verse by verse read in the Lord's holy writ in the Zopium Den. So in the meantime, y'all, if you see our works is squared up and you can dig it, give us some of your money. <laughs> So we can keep doing it, y'all. So please share. You know, thank you so much, y'all, to, to y'all who support. You guys rock, y'all. So yeah. we're very grateful, y'all. And, we, and we're just trying to do our part, too. Thank you for helping us do we our part. We are grateful. All right. Father in heaven, thank you so much. Uh, we hope that our study was a blessing to you, Lord. Uh, it was a blessing to have a study party. You are the life of it. Yes. And, um, you know, we just hope that we, we've reported of you correctly and that we are, you know, ever conforming to you. And, uh, you know, to be what it is that you need for us to be. Uh, we want to serve you and fellowship with you forever. And to y'all, thank you guys so much for being part of this fellowship, being part of our study, uh, our journey as we try to learn. And, uh, you know, we share our studies with you. We hope that, uh, you know, inviting you into our studies uh, bless you. And, um, you know, and we trust in the Lord is uh, fortifying you and giving you his shalom and uh, his joy and uh, helping us walk and talk in his way. Alright y'all, so that being said, we will see you guys next time, thank you so much.